Imagine that sometime in the next decade, a long-feared war with China has erupted. In a bid to destroy Chinese defenses and break through to its airspace, the U.S. Air Force sends its advanced fighter jets and bombers into the most hostile territory it's faced in decades. But this mission is different than those of the past. Swarming alongside each manned aircraft is a handful of small drone wingmen operating with minimal direction from the accompanying pilot. They scout ahead to map out targets, use electronic warfare capabilities to jam enemy signals, and launch their own missiles to carry out airstrikes and destroy targets multiplying the effect a single pilot can have in battle. This is the future of warfare envisioned by top Air Force leaders, most notably Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall. And he's confident this isn't just a sci-fi pipe dream. The technology is there now, where we can talk about a formation of a manned aircraft controlling multiple unmanned aircraft. There's enough technology in existence from programs that we've already conducted. It convinces me that's not a crazy idea, Kendall said. For years, the Air Force has floated the possibility of teaming up drones and manned aircraft most notably as a possible feature of its secretive next-generation air dominance platform. But now, the Air Force's plans for doing so are coming into focus and energizing defense firms who hope their years of war pairing manned and unmanned systems will pay off. We're catching the wave that's now being created, said Richard Sullivan, an executive at Northrop Grumman, adding he's been very excited by Kendall's recent comments. We don't even know exactly how this is going to unfold yet, High Note said. But it is clear that the autonomous collaborative platforms, we like to call them, or unmanned systems, are going to be a major part of the future of warfare. With the U.S. military shifting its focus to winning a war against an advanced adversary, such as China, experts say the man-to-man -man teaming concept would be crucial to the U.S. prevailing. The Air Force Research Laboratory laid the groundwork for a future man-to-man -man teaming through its Skyboard program, an artificial intelligence-driven wingman that underwent its first flight test in a drone last April. More recently, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency made progress on its X-61A Gremlins program, which seeks to deploy and then recover swarms of small, sensor-laden drones from cargo planes in flight. Last October, the agency flew and successfully recovered in midair a small Gremlin drone for the first time. The Royal Australian Air Force has also made strides the way with its Loyal Wingman program, also known as the Air Power Teaming System. The Armed Service in March 2021 announced a $115 million contract with Boeing for three more autonomous Loyal Wingman drones, which would bring the force's total to six aircraft that it hopes to one day fly alongside manned fighters. A Natural Evolution Hawk Carlisle, a retired general who formerly led Air Combat Command, said the ability to extend an aircraft reach with AI-infused wingman is the next step for air combat. This is a natural evolution, especially when you look at the capability today with respect to AI, with respect to systems, with respect to the computing power and capability you can put in a particular sized aircraft, noted Carlisle, who is now the chief executive of the National Defense Industrial Association. For the last 20 years, the Air Force has flown drones like the MQ-9 Reaper in the largely permissive environments of the Middle East and Afghanistan, conducting airstrikes and feeding the military's insatiable need for intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance. But the next war will need much more. In a conflict with a peer like China, Carlisle said, the environment would be greatly contested, requiring additional capacity alongside fighter aircraft and meaning additional dilemmas and confusion. These drone wingmen could fill a number of roles, experts say. They could broaden the mother aircraft's situational awareness by flying ahead with infrared, electromagnetic, radar, or visual sensors. This could improve the human pilot's situational awareness, map out targets, or identify the location of radars and air defense systems to provide a clear corridor for the manned aircraft. 
They can also serve as communications nodes for friendly forces or conduct electronic warfare operations by jamming enemy radars, communications, or other signals. If they are large enough to carry their own armaments, they could carry out their own air-to-air -air or air-to-ground strikes alongside demand aircraft, giving the enemy multiple threats to counter. But even without onboard weapons, a drone swarm could serve as a decoy to befuddle the enemy, sending out false signals that make it difficult for the adversary to differentiate between the manned and unmanned aircraft. In a December 9th forum with Defense One, Kendall said one of his top priorities is identifying how to get combat drones ready to fly in real-world operations alongside manned aircraft. This could entail as many as five unmanned aircraft controlled by a single fighter. The Air Force primarily envisions this as part of the NGAD concept, Kendall said, but it could be adapted to operational F-22 and F-35 jets. The idea is the manned aircraft is essentially calling plays, and he's using these other unmanned combat aircraft basically as a formation to do things that make sense tactically, Kendall said. This opens up a whole bunch of opportunities. Kendall also floated the possibility of extending this concept to the B-21 Raider, which is under development, and networking such unmanned aircraft together under the bomber's control in a loose formation against the enemy. But the finer points are still to be determined, he acknowledged, including the mix of aircraft, drone payloads, and what plays would be pre-programmed into the unmanned systems. A Classified Project Kendall explained that the Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program is classified, with only a few details to be released publicly. However, the Secretary already dropped several hints, specifically about the companies who will most likely serve as competitors for the program. We are talking to some industry partners who are already involved with the NGAD program, he said. Three aerospace giants, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, are believed to be competing for the country's sixth-generation fighter under the NGAD program. Kendall mentioned that Boeing's MQ-28 Ghostbat could be a good testbed for manned-unmanned -manned aircraft teaming. The expectation is that these aircraft can be designed to be less survivable and less capable, but still bring an awful lot to the fight in a mixture that the enemy has a very hard time sorting out and dealing with, he stressed. You can even intentionally sacrifice some of them to draw fire, if you will, to make the enemy expose himself. <laughs>